click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in today's session we are going to study about compression molding. Compression molding is a type of molding which helps us to get finished products for thermosetting plastics. Thermosetting plastics are those plastics when once heated and then cooled down, they'll take their shape and harden off in that shape permanently. So when we use compression molding, we have to be very careful about what we are going to make out of that raw materials or else we'll end up making the wrong products and that will stay forever. In today's session, we'll study actually how the compression molding takes place for thermosetting materials. Compression molding. It is one of the most common methods for molding thermosetting materials. Now, what are thermosetting materials? When we use plastics, plastics are of two types. One is thermoplastic plastics and one is thermosetting plastics. Thermoplastics are those materials when we heat them, they will become a liquid form and when we cool them, they will become solid again. On reheating it, it will again become a liquid. On recooling, it will again become a solid. Now what are thermosetting materials? Thermosetting materials are such that once we heat them, they'll become liquid and on cooling they'll become solid again. But when we try to heat them again, they will not heat up into a liquid at all. They will just take the place and take the mold of the shape and they'll harden it into that. And that's the reason why we have to work very carefully when it comes to thermosetting plastics. Because once we have decided to make something out of it, it will be there forever. It will not change, it will not liquefy again and we cannot reuse or recycle it at all. For such plastics, we use the method of compression molding. We use only thermosetting materials for compression molding which can withstand high temperature and pressure. But again, high temperature and pressure are withstanded only for once. Once that is done and it is cooled down, it will take the shape of the mold forever. This process consists of compressing the mold and resinous material into the desired shape by the use of molds, heat and pressure. This happens for the first time. You take the raw material, the raw thermosetting material and then you can heat it. You can use good temperature and good pressure because thermosetting materials can withstand both good temperatures and pressure. But both of them can be withstanded only for once. That is the first time of it. First time you give it good temperature, good pressure, you liquefy the thermosetting material and then you put it inside a mold. Once you put it inside a mold, it will cool down and you will get the finished product out of it. A predetermined quantity of raisin powder or pellets is usually heated up to 120 degrees Celsius before the cavity of the heat mold is filled with it. Let us see this with the help of a diagram. So now this is my mold for the compression molding. Over here I have the top molding part. This top molding part is also known as the male die. We have a bottom molding part. Bottom molding part is also known as the female die. Over here we have this pin because of this we can withstand the pressure. We can put any amount of pressure we want. We have guide pins over here as well. These guide pins will help us to keep the pressure as we want it to be. Now if I want this material to be extremely thin, I will press the guide pins and I will press the guide pins a little more stronger. But if I want this part or this material to be thicker, I will put little pressure on it. We have to make sure that our pressures and temperature are optimum so that once it is set, it forms a complete good product. Finally, we have an extraction pin over here. This is molding plastic ingredient in cavity. This is the main cavity in which we have to put our material in it, the raw materials in it. The raw materials are generally preheated up to 120 degrees Celsius so that when they come into this molding cavity, they form a good line over here. And now with this help of this extraction pin, I can just remove the cavity out of it and I can get the mold out of it. From the mold, I can eject out the plastic and that is my finished product. After charging the mold, the two parts of the mold are carefully brought together under low pressure. It is very important to make sure that the pressure is low at the start. Once you put the liquid plastic into the mold, you cannot just put high pressure on it or else the entire shape will be disrupted. The pressure should be comparatively low. It is then compressed by hydraulic pressure. Again, this hydraulic pressure is created with the help of the pressure pins or the guide pins which were shown in the diagram. Pressures from 2000 to 10,000 PSI are used. Let me show you the guide pins with the help of which the pressures can be put. 
so over here if you all see this is my cavity i am put some amount of plastic in it this is my thermosetting material thermosetting plastics and over here they are in the liquid form whenever you put a plastic you just put it into a very low pressure this is my preheated plastic of about 120 degrees celsius and over here i am maintaining extremely low pressures right now after the plastic has settled down but not cooled completely i'll start putting pressure with the help of these guide pins and this pressure points over here and with the help of that i can create pressure of about 2000 to 10000 psi and the plastic can bear pressures about 2000 to 10000 psi with the help of uniform pressure and temperature this plastic will take the shape of the cavity properly and then when cooled down we can just extract it with the help of the extracting pin and eject out the mole out of it this pressure and the heat allow the resin to melt and flow thereby filling the cavity between the two parts of the mold we have seen the two parts the top part of the mold and the bottom part of the mold the top part is known as the male dye the bottom part is known as the female dye the material in the mold is kept for specified time under the correct temperature and the pressure for a proper curve. We have to keep the material inside the cavity for some time so that it settles off, it takes the shape of the cavity and then only we can eject it out. The curing is either done by heating in case of thermo settings or by cooling in case of thermoplastics. Now why do we say that we need to do curing in the case of thermo settings for heating it? and cooling it for thermoplastics because we know that in thermosetting materials once the material is ejected out and we have got a complete product on reheating it it will not change at all no physical properties or chemical properties of a thermosetting material will change it will not break any bonds between them and that's the reason why i can test it or i can cure it with respect to heating it but for thermoplastic materials, when I heat it, it liquidifies and then I put it into the molds and it solidifies as a mold. After when I try heating it again, again it will form a liquid version of it and I can again reuse it or recool it. And that's the reason why curing for thermoplastics can only be done by cooling it. And for thermo settings, it can be done either by cooling it or by heating it. It does not make a difference. After curing, the molded articles are taken out by the opening of the part. Let me show you that with the help of a diagram. So over here, if you all see molding plastic ingredients in the cavity, over here there is an opening. And with the help of this opening, I can just pull this opening down and I can just take out the molded articles out of it. The entire mold can come down and we can remove the plastic from the cavity and we can get the finished product of the thermosetting material. A variety of products ranging from ashtrays and electric switch boxes to radios and television cabinets are manufactured in this way. There are many more examples for this because thermosetting materials are much stronger than thermoplastic materials and many heat resistant substances are made with the help of thermosetting materials. So here we studied about compression molding for thermosetting materials. We also studied how exactly we should do it and how we can use temperature and pressure for doing it. We also studied the various uses of it and its high utility. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda.